One in four Australian children has head lice. Lice affect kids and adults, and contrary to popular belief, having head lice has nothing to do with hygiene. Head lice are small, wingless insects that feed on human blood. They have to feed twice a day, so they die quickly when separated from their host. They're about the size of a sesame seed. Lice are light grey before feeding and dark brown after feeding. Yuck. Another myth holds that they jump from person to person, but head lice are actually incapable of jumping, flying or swimming. So the most likely way to become infested, sorry, that is the right word, is to have head-to-head -head contact with someone who has lice. That's why primary school age children and their parents are the most susceptible to infestation. In rare cases, strands of hair left on pillows or clothing can cause transmission, but the lice themselves can't cling directly to clothes or hairbrushes, so it's not common to catch lice this way. Head lice can't be passed to animals, and they're not known to carry diseases, but scratching the scalp can cause irritation and increase the chances of a secondary infection. The lifespan of a single louse is incredibly short. Eggs are laid near the scalp, hatching after five to seven days. Baby lice are called nymphs. When they hatch, they leave the empty eggshells cemented to the hair shaft. These are the nits that are often the first sign of a head lice infestation, since only half of people with head lice get itchy scalps. Fun fact, you can tell if nits are dead or alive because the live ones pop if you squeeze them. Nymphs take around a week to reach adult size and another week to start breeding, so it's best to try and get rid of them before they're two weeks old. There are two main methods for treating head lice, chemical and mechanical. The mechanical method, using lots of conditioner and a special fine comb, is often recommended by experts because it's less likely to irritate the scalp or cause the lice to become insecticide resistant. Even if you do use the chemical method, you still have to comb out all the lice and nits. Either way, you're in for an arduous process that requires you to comb every single strand of hair. Miss a strand or a single louse and the infestation will start all over again when the next generation of eggs hatches. The same applies to using heat, like a hairdryer or hair straightener. Heat does kill lice, but they lay eggs and live so close to the scalp that it's unlikely you'll catch them all. That's one of the reasons why prevention is better than cure. If the whole school and the whole family does lice treatment at once, the chance of your child catching head lice again is much lower. And that is good news for you.